we have talked about the characteristics of the three domains, uh, domain bacteria, domain archaea, and domain eukarya. So the focus of this video is to give more emphasis on domain eukarya. You see, organisms that fall under domain eukarya could be something unicellular like the paramecium species, it could be mushrooms, it could be plants, and it could be the animals as well. So there are many different types of organisms that can fall under domain eukarya. So now the emphasis is more on domain eukarya, and that's where we split the domain eukarya organisms into four kingdoms. The kingdoms are kingdom animalia, kingdom plantae, kingdom fungi, and of course, kingdom protoctista. Again, for these four kingdoms, we will draw out a table with four columns, and we are going to talk a little bit about their characteristics. So for all of the kingdom, no matter what, they are all eukaryotic. You may put that point in the exam, by the way. If a question asks you, what is the characteristics of organisms in kingdom animalia, for example, you can say that, number one, they are eukaryotic. You will get one mark over that. And for all of them, they are eukaryotic, which means to say the cells have nucleus, the cells are expected to have membrane-bound organelles and such. Now, uh, the more important thing is whether it's unicellular or multicellular. Unicellular just means that the organisms are made up of one cell, but multicellular just means that they are made up of many cells. Organisms under kingdom animalia and plantae, which means animals and plants respectively, they are all multicellular. There are no such things as unicellular animals or unicellular plants. All animals have more than one cell and all plants have more than one cell. Because animals and plants are multicellular, they are able to form these structures known as tissues and organs. So if you have some basics in biology, you know that tissues are just basically uh, similar cells doing a shared function. As an example here, I'm just going to draw out smooth muscle cells and when they join together, they form something known as tissues. So what happens if there are also ciliated epithelium tissue and also supporting tissues in the area? When they all get grouped up together, they form something known as organs. Remember, the definition of organ is just different tissues working together to carry out a specific function. You don't need to memorize that. The point I'm just trying to make here is animals and plants, they have different types of tissues because they all have specialized cells. Because for the animal, as an example for us, we have different, we have specialized cells that do specific functions. We have goblet cells to produce mucus. We have ciliated cells to, uh, to produce the beating to remove the mucus by having their cilia to move the mucus upwards. We have muscle tissues for contraction. We have supporting tissues to do supporting things. So the point is, animals and plants have specialized cells so that they can form different types of tissues and those tissues can work together to form organs. So the point I'm just trying to make here is, animals and plants will have tissues and organs. Like for example, in humans, because we fall under animals, we have organs like stomach, brain, heart, um, pancreas, those kind of things. Plants also have organs, by the way. The leaf of the plant is an organ. The root is an organ. The stem is an organ. Um, flowers are organs as well. So kingdom animalia and kingdom plantae will be able to form tissues and organs. We are just doing animal and plant comparisons first. Uh, chloroplast, this is very obvious. Animals, kingdom animalia, animals do not have chloroplast. Plants have chloroplast. That's obviously true. The nutrition that organ Organisms in kingdom animalia carries out is heterotrophic. Heterotrophic means that we have to get our nutrients by consuming other organisms. Hetero just means different, uh, so that means we have to feed on different organisms. Uh, kingdom plantae can carry out autotrophic nutrition, which means that they can make their own food through a process known as photosynthesis. Um, of course, there are some exceptions, or there are also some mixtures. Uh, for example, the Venus fly trap. The, the Venus fly trap, yes, it does eat insects, but they are still considered plants because they can still do photosynthesis, by the way. Uh, next thing, cell wall. Animals do not have cell wall. Plants have cellular cell wall. And vacuoles. Uh, animals do not have vacuoles, which are, if they do have vacuoles, it's usually small and temporary uh, vesicles. They are referred to as vesicles. And for plants, they have large permanent vacuole. 
What about cilia of lagella, these uh, whip-like structures which provides movement? Animalia kingdom, yes, some of our cells will have cilia of lagella, for example, our ciliated cells and sperm cells, right? Um, but plantae, very rarely do the cells have cilia of lagella, it's mostly absent. Now, let's look at the kingdom of fungi. Fungi, for example, yeast, mushroom, mold, they are eukaryotic. They can either be unicellular or multicellular depending on the organism. If you are talking about yeast, yeast can be unicellular. But if you see mushrooms, mushrooms are multicellular. Tissues and organs, even though some of them are multicellular, they cannot form specialized tissues and specialized organs. Most of the cells look quite similar to each other. There might be some slight differences, but they are not as specific as animals or plants. Fungi also do not have chloroplasts, obviously. They cannot make their own food, so they will have to carry out heterotrophic nutrition where they release enzymes to digest usually dead organisms or waste material, and they absorb the nutrition. The cell wall, I've mentioned this before, they have chitin cell wall. They do have cell wall, but it's different from plant cell wall, by the way. So plant is cellulose cell wall, but fungi is chitin cell wall. Vacuole, we don't have to care. Cilia and flagella, we also do not have to care about when we are talking about it in the exam. Now, the other important thing that we have to see here is the Kingdom Protoctista. Now, <laughs> if you do look at some textbooks, the Protoctista Kingdom is sometimes referred to as the Trash Kingdom or the Junk Kingdom. There is a reason for that. Uh, please do not put that in the exam, by the way. <laughs> All right. Now, imagine for a while you see an organism. The organism over here, it has a nucleus, but it's unicellular. It has no cell wall, but it can do photosynthesis. So immediately, it's nuclear. It has a nucleus, so it's eukaryotic. But it's unicellular. Because it's unicellular, you cannot put it under plants. You cannot put it under animals because plants and animals are multicellular. Then you might be thinking, oh, maybe it's a fungus. But then when you check the cell wall, it doesn't have cell wall as well. So it does not fall under the plant, fungi, or animal kingdom. So where do we put it? And also another extra thing, it can do photosynthesis. It can photosynthesize. Uh, the, the, my, my, my grammar there was a bit off. I should say it can do photosynthesis. All right. It's not can do photosynthesize. That's, that's, I, might, I might have been really sleepy when I wrote this out. So, so you cannot put it under animal. You cannot put it under plants. You cannot put it under fungi. So we will discard it into or we will sweep it into the protoctista kingdom because that's where we put organisms that we don't know how to classify what about this organism over here it has a nucleus but it has no cell wall but it has flagella and it also has a large permanent vacuole um, where do I put it? I cannot put it under animals or plants because unicellular. I cannot put it under fungi because, again, no cell wall. So in this case, again, push it to the Protoctista kingdom. So the Protoctista kingdom is a highly controversial kingdom because most of the organisms are unicellular. Tissues and organs? No, they don't form tissues and organs. Some of the organisms may have chloroplasts. If the organisms have chloroplasts, they are autotrophic. If they don't have chloroplasts, they are heterotrophic. Cell wall, again, some of the organisms have cell wall. What about cilia and flagella? Some of the organisms have cilia or flagella. It's an extremely difficult kingdom to classify. And there are many different organisms that can fall under this. For example here, let's look at the amoeba. The amoeba over here falls under the kingdom of Protoctista because it's unicellular, it has a nucleus, it's eukaryotic, but again, no chloroplasts. They don't have cell wall, right? So the main reason they are put under the Protoctista kingdom is because they are obviously a unicellular. Now, what about another one? Let's look at another one here. A euglena. Now, a euglena is quite interesting because it has a flagellum, it has cell surface membrane, it has nucleus, but here's the weird thing, it has chloroplasts. So some students are like, oh, because they have chloroplasts, they should be put under plants. But you can't because it's unicellular. I told you that plants have to be multicellular. So the euglena also falls under this kingdom as well. What about something known as 
Chlamydomonas. Chlamydomonas over here, it has two flagella. It has a cell wall, by the way, it does, but it's unicellular. So, and it also has chloroplasts. So, obviously, we cannot put it under plants, so we just push it into the trash kingdom, which is Protoctista kingdom. Organisms under the Protoctista kingdom are further subclassified. You don't need to know this in detail, but it's further classified into protozoa, which are animal like. That means they look like animal cells, but they are unicellular, or they are algae. Algae is where you have unicellular plant-like cells. That means they behave like plants, but you cannot call them plants because they are unicellular as well. So these are the classifications of the four kingdoms under domain Eukarya. I hope you understand this.